Hey there, welcome back to the show. Today I'm diving deep into a topic that's not just close to my heart, but the one that I believe can transform lives. Today I'm inspired by my conversation with a 10-time world record holder, Colin O'Brady. He was the first man to cross Antarctica unassisted. This incredible journey wasn't just a test of physical endurance, but a profound exploration of mental resilience and the power of solitude. The first powerful idea that you can use to self-coach and coach your clients from this episode is leveraging solitude for deeper reflection. Now I know what you might be thinking. Solitude? <laughs> In our always-on hyper-connected world, the idea of solitude might seem a bit old school, maybe even a luxury. But here's the thing. It's in those quiet moments alone that we often find our deepest insights and breakthroughs. Let's break this down. Solitude isn't just about being alone. It's about what we do with that alone time. Think about it. When was the last time you had a truly groundbreaking idea or came to a profound realization about your life? Chances are it was during a moment of quiet introspection. But how do we turn these moments of solitude into a tool for deep reflection, especially in a coaching context? Here's a technique I love to share with my fellow coaches. That's you. The reflective walk. A reflective walk is a simple yet profoundly impactful exercise you can suggest to your clients. Here's how it works. Encourage your clients to set aside time for a solitary walk. This isn't just any walk. Though it's a walk with intention, a purposeful journey into your own minds, into their own minds. Before they set out, ask them to choose a specific topic or question they've been wrestling with. It could be a career decision, a personal challenge, or, or any area where they are seeking any kind of clarity. Now, I do this at least three times a week, and I have even taken this idea further and done the 12-hour walk, which is an idea proposed by Colin O'Brady in his book, The 12-Hour Walk. And it was one of the most profound things I've done this year. As your clients walk alone with their thoughts, the physical movement combined with the solitude fosters an environment ripe for reflection. Encourage them to notice what thoughts and feelings arise as they ponder their chosen topic. The key here is not to force solutions, but to let insights bubble up naturally from the depths of their mind. As they walk, ask them to keep their pocket journal with them. Have them note thoughts that come up. This act of writing helps crystallize those thoughts, making them more tangible, making them more actionable. So, fellow coaches, I encourage you to introduce the reflective walk to your clients or do the 12-hour walk. Now, let's explore the concept that's both metaphor and a challenge. Choosing your Everest. Now, when we talk about Everest, we are not just referring to the tallest peak on the planet. Instead, we are diving into what your Everest means that ultimate personal or professional goal that stands at your pinnacle of achievement, your most ambitious dreams. The key here is that it's your Everest. It doesn't have to be comparative to someone else's or to the world standards. Now, how do we apply this in a coaching setting? One powerful technique I've adopted is called visioning exercise. It's a simple yet profound way to guide your clients in identifying their personal Everest. Start by asking your client to list all the successes they've had in the last 20 years. Things that today may seem easy, but when they started, it seemed impossible. Most of us can't remember challenges in our lives or failures, but it doesn't help us get in a state of believing that we can do the impossible. This is why you need to help them seeing their own awesomeness, the impossible they have achieved. Now, ask your clients to close their eyes and visualize a version of themselves in the future who has achieved their greatest goal. Encourage them to imagine this scene in vivid detail. Where are they? What are they doing? Who they are with? And most importantly, how do they feel? This visualization isn't just about achievement. It's about the sense of fulfillment, a sense of purpose, a sense of joy that comes with reaching their personal Everest. After this visualization, engage them in a reflective conversation. Ask them to describe their Everest in detail. What challenges do they foresee? What resources or allies might they need? This discussion isn't just about setting a goal. It's about mapping the journey, understanding the hurdles, and building a resilience needed to overcome all of these. Choosing your Everest is more than an exercise. It's a commitment to pursuing a goal that truly resonates with one's deepest desires and values. 
It's about finding that thing that lights a fire in your soul and committing to the journey, no matter how daunting it may seem. Now let's explore a fascinating concept that might just shift the way you view your life's journey, and it's the idea of ones and tens. Now this isn't about grades or rating, it's about the experiences that define us, the lows, ones, and the highs, tens of our life. Imagine your life as a spectrum, with ones being those tough, challenging moments that test every fiber of your being, and tens being the absolute peaks, filled with joy, achievement, and fulfillment. Most of us try to stay comfortable hovering around the fives, where things are neither too bad, neither exceptionally good. But here's the kicker. It's the ones and the tens where real growth and transformation happens. Now, how do we apply this in coaching? Well, here's a technique. I found this incredibly effective. It's called the spectrum exercise. It's all about helping your clients map out their own ones and tens to gain insights and drive meaningful change. Start by asking your clients to reflect on their life's most challenging moments, their ones. What did they learn? How did they grow? Then have them identify their tens, those peak experiences filled with joy and fulfillment. What made these moments so special? The key here is to help them see the connection between their ones and tens. Often it's our toughest challenges that pave the way for our greatest achievements. But here's where it gets really interesting. Encourage your clients not to shy away from the potential ones. Instead, see them as gateways to future tens. It's about embracing the full spectrum of life, knowing that our lowest lows can lead to our highest highs. This mindset shift can be incredibly empowering, pushing us to take risks, step out of our comfort zones, and ultimately live a more vibrant and dynamic life. I challenge you to think about your own wants and tens. What have your toughest challenges taught you? How have they shaped the path to your greatest joys? Remember, life isn't about staying comfortable at a five. It's about embracing the full spectrum from the ones to the tens and everything in the middle. This brings me to the next big idea and that is embracing discomfort for growth. We are wired to seek comfort, to nestle in the warm, cozy nooks of our lives. But here's the twist, growth, real growth, sprouts not from the cozy nooks, but from the rugged and even terrains of discomfort. Now let's draw inspiration from Colin's remarkable journey across Antarctica. He didn't conquer those icy expanses because it was comfortable. He did it because he was willing to embrace the raw, biting cold, the isolation, the uncertainty, the discomfort. It was in those challenging moments that he grew, not just as an explorer, but as a person. So how can we apply this to coaching? Well, I've got a little technique I call it discomfort dare. It's all about gently nudging our clients out of their comfort zones and into their growth zones. Here's how it works. Start by having a candid conversation with your clients about their comfortable zones. What do these safe havens look like? What activities, habits, or thoughts keep them tethered within these boundaries? Next, I want you to propose a dare, a challenge that's slightly outside their comfort zone. It doesn't have to be monumental. Even small steps can lead to significant growth. Perhaps it's speaking up in a meeting trying a new activity, or even just taking a different route to work. The key is that it should stir a bit of uncomfortable feeling in their belly. Encourage them to approach this dare with curiosity rather than apprehension. What can they learn from this experience? How does stepping into discomfort make them feel? And what insights does it bring? This reflective component is crucial as it transforms the experience from a mere task to a learning opportunity. And here's the beauty of the discomfort there. It's not a one and done deal. It's a practice. It's a habit that you can cultivate. Over time, your clients will start to see discomfort not as something to be avoided at all costs, but as a gateway to growth, to resilience, to ultimately a more fulfilling, joyous life. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, doing extraordinary feats is an endeavor of doing little dares, loving the ones and tens in life, and giving yourself some time and space so we can really know ourselves.